Namaste Angels. I'm here to do the weekly love reading for um, Sunday, May 14th uh, through Saturday, May 20th. So a lot of high energy days this week, or at least to me. Um, the 18th is the day that Venus exits its RX zone completely. So it went direct already, as we know, the Venus retrograde. And from there, it moved into shadow or the, you know, the retrograde zone. It exits completely on the 18th. The 19th is the birthday of Malcolm X. You guys know I, my head is full of um, strangers' birthdays, <laughs> celebrity birthdays and things like that. Um, it's Malcolm X's. And Malcolm X, to me, based on my calculations, in large part from the book of Daniel, uh, is the quote-unquote anointed one of the scriptures. So that will also be a very high-energy day. Um, notice it's a 19th. <laughs> and what else? The 20th is the day on which, similar to the Venus, uh, that Mercury exits its RX zone. So whereas Mercury retrograde may have still been affecting some of us, um, Certainly, while not as um, harshly as it had been before it went direct, still affecting some of us, that Mercurian energy, it leaves completely on the 20th, Saturday. So with that, I'm going to begin with relationship and this beautiful blue angel and these twin dolphins, perhaps, maybe also in a relationship themselves. And opening to golden memories. This can be about some of those people that the retrogrades, speaking of those, um, have brought us into contact with. I got another text today from the ex that I hadn't seen in 20 years. And then I saw him and then, <laughs> and then I told him I had a man and like, you know, leave me alone. And he went away and he popped up again. I mean, it's only, it was only to say happy mother's day, but I just, I still found it kind of weird. Like, especially after that text that I sent him that time. Anyway, um, those relationships that the retrogrades brought up out of nowhere, um, for some of us, yeah, some, an opportunity to be like nostalgic about the past and the fond memories. Um, and that's why we were presented yet again with some of these things from our past. When the planets move backwards, um, they bring us sort of backwards. That's why our past resurfaces during the retrograde. That's what happens. Um, the planets move backward and, and so do we. <laughs> that's why we come into the contact with these past people uh, and past experiences. So having um, some positive memories about those things, but like that should be like where it ends. Um taking, you know, that positivity with us and leaving any baggage from any of these people, places, or things. Opening to answer prayer, opposite relationship. So some of us could have been praying for positivity uh, in our relationships, maybe of all kinds, and our prayers have been answered. It's now uh, cause for celebration. Opening to retreat, the need for us to um, get grounded, maybe take in what's left of that Taurus sun. Um, that's, this is the last week of it. We're next, after the 20th, right? The 21st, we go into Gemini. Okay, so <laughs> Earth Connection, I just saw that retreat and it made me think about the Taurus sun and getting grounded. And then I open right to this Earth Connection, which is certainly about reconnecting with the planet, with Mother Nature, Mother Earth, um, putting your feet down in the soil, in the grass, if you even can, you know, if you can do that. If you live in an area that's conducive to that, getting outside in the rain. Last week, we asked the question, can you stand the rain? Um, that was from like a metaphorical point of view, the masculine wanting to know if the feminine was willing to stick it out. Um... This week, a little bit more literal question coming from the universe instead about like, are you willing to spend some time outside <laughs> in the rain, in the sun, under the moon, under the stars, um, you know, whatever, just with mother nature for a time. Relationship. I'll go one more and it's the golden path. That path toward the Emerald City, the or for me, maybe like, or, or some of us, or maybe in general, the Emerald Ray <laughs> um, toward that healing, right? The Emerald Way, Ray is all about healing. That could be what the path is about here. That's from where my original soul is, uh, the Emerald Ray, a healer. I think we're all like marching down this path um, toward that healing. There's a few more days of the month of Iyer, uh, similar to how there's just a few more days of the sign of Taurus and making the, um, the most, getting the most and making the best out of uh, what days remain. 
to our own benefit. So we can have healthy love relationships and experiences. Boom. <laughs> Overall energy is embrace. This card, unlike what it looks like, is about one person, their inner feminine and masculine, being able to come together in a very balanced and loving way. This is loving yourself. This is lacking yourself. This is being alone, but not lonely. Um, just yeah, really getting some you time in because you love you. Uh, and that will help us to love another. Feminine emergence. We are the rising phoenix this week, fully naked and vulnerable before the universe, ready, willing, and able to um, take in the guidance that is provided to us. We see it and acknowledge it as a blessing this week. No more, oh, woe is me. I don't have anything. We realize we're counting our blessings and are being appreciative of just the fact that we're alive, the fact that we're here, all this light that surrounds us, all this yellow, this purple, this orange, um, these white uh, rays filling us here, the crown chakra, the ear chakra, I see the throat chakra. We're going to be able to speak lovingly and strongly with emphasis and confidence, exactly what we want to whom we need. We are ready. The masculine about us, the feminine or woman or man, whoever, whatever we are of his dreams. And maybe also um, someone whom he visits in dreams or who visits him in dreams. About himself, birth. He went in to the cocoon, a caterpillar. He's a fetus at this point. He's growing. He's going through a metamorphosis. He's soon to emerge, similar to us, um, like we're the rising phoenix. He's going to come out a winged being too, a butterfly, brand new, reborn, starting over. The union, the mystic. He wants the both of us to pay attention to our intuition. He wants us to communicate with him telepathically, again, maybe even through his dreams, outcome or overall rather message from afar this is a week of heavy communication in the 5d um dreams telepathy intuition maybe music other things coming to you, you may even get a long distance phone call um something more 3d ish um hmm. even a visit some of you may get a surprise like, what are you doing in town? What the type of thing um, <laughs> is what just came to me. Overall, heaven on earth, there's something of which we need to let go to make way for something new that's born. Out with the old, in with the new is what this heaven on earth card is all about, contrary to how it may appear. What would the masculine have the feminine do with surrender? believe in miracles they do come true um and i'm doing this reading on the 13th which is the feast day of our lady of fatima on this day from the mary queen of angels deck my reading for that day uh the overall energy was in fact miracles from her um her uh, deck the queen of angels um, tarot deck oracle deck that i use and if anybody can perform a miracle and will bless us with miracles it is the queen of angels so belief, masculine, he's like fully, he's fully in, he's fully present in this rebirth process. Okay. He's going through it. He's paying attention. He's stripped down naked too, similar to us with the emergence. Um, and he's fully vulnerable and fully in surrender 
taking on that feminine energy of the, that the moon provided, maybe. Um, the moon always gives us uh, plenty of beautiful feminine energy of surrender. And he's just listening. So he's also taking advantage of this, right? This um, third eye chakra energy from the, the mystic and the intuition and the telepathy and the messages from afar. He's paying very close attention. Notice they both have this star too. So from a 3D perspective, uh, this star could be representing the sign of Aquarius for some of us and maybe um, communication in a more 3D and direct way. Um, perhaps over like text or something that message from afar could be coming from someone long distance via text. Um, in some cases, or you meet on a dating site. Maybe some of us who are meeting for the first time or, you know, haven't connected with our divine partner yet. You're connecting for the first time this week, maybe, um, at a dating site or some other means of like communicating with people, some sort of online group or something. Um, where like your souls find one another, this kind of, uh, again, Aquarius energy, you find one another. And from there you communicate electronically somehow. And what we both, you know what, this is part of the believing in miracles. Um, but this is from the universe and what it wants us both to do. It's a message from afar as in from mother and father to us both. And it's to believe um, have positive thoughts, um, <laughs> pay attention to the messages, have positive thoughts and dreams about the abundance of all things. Um, so it's like love in all forms, the money, the, the love Venus wanting to pull up on us and actually doing it. I've gotten, um, contacted by some of you who've been offered jobs. A woman told me today she had been offered a part-time, she has a part-time job. She was offered a full-time one. She turned it down and she was like, I should have taken his information or never mind. I'm going to get more offers, you know, because she's been paying attention. She knows what the readings say. We're going to be getting a lot of opportunities. Another one contacted me today and said that she got a new job. Um, people leaving these situations where they felt bound to somebody because of some sort of monetary situation, but they don't anymore. They freed themselves. So uh, the universe wanting us both to continue on that path, um, toward well-being basically for ourselves, like ridding ourselves of this codependency on not only money, but sometimes the people who, who hold it and can, you know, use it to manipulate us. Beautiful. Going on to the Doreen, Doreen Virtue Romance Angel Oracle, beginning with Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Opening to Honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Soulmate. And <laughs> True Love. This is the romance of a lifetime. Soulmate. Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So mate, I'll go one more and it's passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. So made back. And I've come to honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Now, for some, um, not next week that I can think of, but the week after there is a holiday, um, at least in the United States, it's Memorial Weekend. That can be the holiday. We can be celebrating the fact that the Mercury retrograde is completely over in, in all forms. Um, and we can finally communicate again so we can make up our own holiday. And it may be a holiday somewhere else in the world that I don't know about. And for others, it's just the honeymoon phase of the relationship. Trust um, that all is well and will come to pass as it's meant. This situation is calling for you to have faith.
Masculine is attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. Surrounded by a past life relationship, you've known each other before. Some of the masculine still dealing with a situation of ridding themselves um, of someone. It's not necessarily romantic. Someone that, that has um, formed as a block. But with all that work that we saw that he was putting in, in the previous spread, he's on his way. No worries. In his subconscious, what's on his mind? What's he contemplating? Engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Feminine. This could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. Surrounded by a wedding. This situation involves marriage. I love when wedding and uh, engagement are on the table at the same time. But here's the codependency we spoke of. Addictions are affecting your romantic life, feminine, in your um, subconscious. So it, it's very well something about which you're fully aware and you're here thinking about it. How can I get out of this situation? How can I become unaddicted uh, to whatever, whomever, wherever this is? Crowning. Free yourself. That's how. It's time to take back control of your life. At the root. True love. This is the romance of a lifetime. And that's why uh, you want to move away from what's holding you back from achieving it. And from you know being able to enjoy it fully. At the heart of the matter, isn't this beautiful? Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Next card is in reverse. Maybe we can get some answers from the hashtag creepy deck for some of us, beginning with karma. Opening to obstacles. Karma. And control. I think we got our answers already. Karma. And Ice Queen. Speaking of Aquarius and messages, uh, that can be who this is, an Aquarius or other air sign, Gemini, Libra, perhaps or someone with those traits or taking on that energy this week. Karma. And opening to fun times. We'll see if these cards will tell us anything else about the free yourself and the codependency, maybe about the past life relationship. Courting man, uh, this masculine, perhaps interested in taking us out, um, in dating us. Maybe we have to free ourselves up so that he can do that. He's not going to uh, take us on until we freed ourselves up. Maybe he has, in some cases, has to free himself up so that he can do that. I did a bunch of shuffling in my hand and the overall energy is courting man still. Here, a top past life relationship, it's karma. So um, whatever the masculine is going through and with whomever or wherever he is going through it um, or over over whatever, people, places, things, whatever the situation is, um, it's, uh, it's something unavoidable. This is a matter of fate, destiny, karma uh, having to do with a past life relationship. So it's just going to have to run its course. Here, atop the codependency, friendship, feminine. So like we're trying to remain nicey-nicey with certain people and not that that's not, how do you, um, 
um, admirable. <laughs> um, it's like with the wrong people and perhaps for the wrong reasons. Like we're trying to keep some people calm and quiet. If I, you know, allow them to, if I don't rock the boat, basically type of thing, um, you know, they'll let me live my life. That's still somebody in a controlling position. So we still have to do away with that. We can't be friends with everybody, unfortunately. Sometimes, um, and I don't even know if I, unfortunately, if I should have added that, you know, we just can't be friends with everybody for, you know, forever. And that's just the way it is. Some people are put into our lives just for a season. And that's the way the universe means it to be. Crowning, here atop the free yourself. True gem. So for some of us, again, uh, that person, that ice queen uh, is a Gemini and a block. <laughs> um, a restriction. For others, that person is who you feel is the true gym. Like, yeah, this is like the, yes, this is your soulmate kind of thing. And you need to free yourself in order to be with them. For others still, the thing from which you need to free yourself is lack. Um, because you want to be able to physically, um, like become engaged, like buy a ring or something. And you're feeling bound to someone, someplace, something, and it can be money, you know, it could be, it could be lack even, could be having, having nothing to do with a third party maybe. And that could have something to do with karma too. Um, something you have to work through, but there's a block here having to do with possibly a Gemini, uh, and for some more literally this true gem, someone, someone is a true gem in your eyes. This is like a valuable, um, person irreplaceable and you know, I, I must free myself up to be with them. And for others, I'd like to, you know, offer them, make an offer uh, to them of this gem. It's here crossing the wedding. Um, I'd like to really get engaged or really enter some sort of commitment with them because this is true love. Further advice. From the hashtag creepy deck, it's young male. Um, <laughs> so we do have a lot of young male and true gym um, combinations. We have a lot of young male and Gemini combinations because Gemini is a, a youthful sign. We have other youthful signs. We have a lot of May December, as they say, relationships anyway um, on this journey. So this can be what this is about here because this is only the, I'm only doing love right now. Otherwise, I'd say this could be somebody's son, maybe a block. Um, and I guess that still could be even having to do with love. But for the most part, I feel that this is the masculine himself, this young male. Feminine, twin flame. Okay, this is what this is about. The young male, like I was saying, there's a lot of May, December relationships, this all coming together for some of us, for others, this can be a youthful person and it very well can be, um, air signs, not necessarily specifically Gemini, but air signs or people taking on that energy, sun, moon, rising, um, Masculine, transmutation. So keep doing what you're doing. You were that rising phoenix in the other spread, the other card. Um, you're one here again. Keep it up. Keep allowing yourself to, um, your vibration to continue to rise, for yourself to metaphorically continue to rise, um, get closer to the universe, closer to God, and to continue healing. On the golden path of healing. The Tony Carmine Salerno says to the feminine, stop limiting yourself with your 3D expectations and let go and let God and he will show you miracles you could never have imagined. You're thinking too small, feminine. Release that. The masculine is calling in his soulmate. His prayers, affirmations, and visualizations will help to bring him um, together with her. And... The feminine, it's time to disconnect from the world. For some of us uh, on our own to um, 
you know, toward that healing and letting go of issues, letting go of our situations from which we need to free ourselves. But for others, this has to do with the commitment. Still look at all the uh, couples in wedding attire. There are on this table. There's the retreat, the engagement, the true love, the wedding. This could be the one. And romantic feelings. They're not all wearing white. This man is in his military dress and this woman is in blue. But here's their like little flower girls. All of these cards of marriage here. Um, so for some of us, we're going away together to work on some sort of healing. And maybe on our actual honeymoon. Maybe we've gotten married. Maybe we got the ring. We overcame this um, this block that was here. And now we are with the full with the true gem. I'm going to get some last advice for us each. Uh, for the feminine from my goddess um, oracle, beginning with Hathor, who was a goddess, um, I guess, similar to Isis in that she was connected to the cow or the oxen. Um, she was a winged cow herself, actually, Hathor. And the goddess of, like, creation but well after Isis, like Isis is like Kemet and this is Egypt um, many, many years later when they would have had H Hathor in charge of birth. They said she like watched all the births, um, but she was also present for death and everything in between, having everything to do with creation. She was involved. She created the bodies uh, is what they said, our, our vessels for the soul to be put into. She didn't create the soul. Someone else's responsibility to do that, but she created all the vessels to hold these, uh, these souls. Opening to Minerva and beliefs. And Sophia and wisdom. Pele and Awakening. Now she's at the top. I'll go one more. And it's Maya and Illusion. My illusion back. And the overall energy, speaking of Isis, is Isis and mothering. And is it Mother's Day yet? Not yet. It's 1110 here. Um, it's about to be 1111. Isis. This card, of course, is about what it seems. It's nurturing. Um, you know, raising one up from birth. Here's Osiris too, by the way. I don't know if anybody can see him. He's down here, like laying under her wing in the water. And for the masculine, a cat and dedication from my gods and titans deck. Uh, a cat is the Mayan god of tattoo artists and tattoos. Um, these were people, these tribes of Mayans, that were very heavily tattooed and they felt that their tattoos were like a contract with themselves, um, a promise. And when you see this card, it sort of calls you to enter commitments and to keep commitments that you've made to yourself, to like not back down, to finish your projects, finish, you know, go after your dreams, lock some things down, maybe lock some people down, <laughs> um, you know, your, your beloved in, in that sense, uh, you know, go for what you know, because it's like, you're, it's like you write it on your soul, basically with these tattoos, it's written on your soul and opening to raw and power. 
So giving you the strength to follow through there. Ra. Here comes Lord Shiva, the destroyer. So speaking of birth and, and uh, rebirth, and maybe even death, Lord Shiva comes through. He knocks down every single thing and, and rebuilds it. It's a, it's a build, destroy um, sort of energy that comes with him. Like, this is no good, so let's get rid of the whole thing, and we'll start all over. Ra. And opening to set and chaos. Ra and Lu and Skill. Ra is back from the cut. And coming to Vishnu and Balance. Overall energy is Poseidon and flow. I'll do you first, masculine. Your card is Jizo and support. This is the full support of the universe to do whatever you have to do. So we started out with that, um, keeping your commitments to yourself and your loved ones. Um, but first and foremost, you, right, or in the universe. You have the support that you need um, to do just that. Feminine, Durga, and boundaries. I spoke about boundaries quite a bit in the reading that I did for today, actually. Today is uh, May 13th, the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. And I spoke quite a bit with regard to the feminine about boundaries. And it looks like I'm about to again. But first, I'm going to read the masculine's card, Jizo. And I've turned right to it, fortunately. Support. An invitation to offer care and support, not only to others, but to your own self. So it sounds very much related to the card, um, the attack card and keeping commitments to yourself. A call to balance caring and caretaking. Walk the streets near many temples in Japan, and you will soon come across a statue of Jizo. Jizo is a Japanese Buddhist god, more accurately, a bodhisattva a being who helps relieve suffering and who chooses not to ascend to heaven until all beings have attained enlightenment. A gentle and kindly figure, he serves as a protector and a guide to souls through the six realms of existence and also watches over travelers in this realm. He guides souls through the six realms by leading them with kindness and by holding out the glowing Dharma jewel. Maybe something like this. The calming light that banishes all fear. This is used as a torch to light the way. He is particularly loving and supportive to his children, young people. Maybe the young male doesn't feel that he can handle all this and do all this by himself. Maybe he's li feeling limited by his age. Um, he's um, pulling some of the feminine's expectancy, perhaps. But he can tackle this, too. He, too, has the support of Jizo. He helps the young people, animals, and also mothers, it says. Jizo is also the embodiment of support to those who suffer. A gentle soul, Jizo reminds us to have compassion for all, especially ourselves, should he walk into your life gently shaking his staff, it's a reminder to support yourself in the best way possible. This may mean more consistent attention to your self-care, like getting more sleep and eating better food, or simply loving yourself more and being less judgmental of yourself in all your uniqueness. He asks that we also offer care and support to others, especially those who are really suffering, and particularly from, in particular, rather, from bullying, sickness, or loss. Shadow side. While it's infinitely precious to have unconditional support, it's also important to take responsibility. Many of us allow people to take care of us constantly, or we're a constant caretaker of others. We need to find the middle path to enlightenment in this area, or we may develop unrealistic dependencies or codependencies like the feminine has 
um, or resentments by neglecting ourselves in favor of others. Feminine Durga. Boundaries. When threatened by demons, I fiercely protect myself with all that I am, with all that I have. From deep within, I call forth all that I need. I am the inaccessible, for I place myself beyond the reach of all that would destroy me and that would alien annihilate me, I'm sorry, and that tries to wound me. I am the unapproachable, for nothing can get at me that I do not willingly let in. I dance my dance of oneness only with what supports me, nurtures me, loves me. For all that does not, I say, approach at your own risk. Mythology. Devi is what the goddess is called in India. To the Hindu, all goddesses are one goddess, different aspects of Devi or the divine feminine. An aspect of Devi was called into being to rid the world of the evil demon Durga. In the battle between the gods and the anti-gods or demons, none of the gods could destroy Durga. So they went to Devi and asked for help. Mounting a tiger and brandishing her fearsome weapons, she attacked the demon who changed from one terrifying form into another until Devi slew him when he transformed into a buffalo. In remembrance of the great battle, Devi took the name of Durga. Meaning of the card, you have called Durga into your life to help you to create boundaries. What are you taking inside that should remain outside? How are you not protecting yourself, your life, your time? Oh, goodness. Is the statement, no, I can't do this right now. I need to care for myself part of your vocabulary. Okay, this is what I was talking about here. Trying to maintain these quote unquote friendships to our own detriment where it's becoming a codependency. Perhaps you feel dumped on by others. Are you feeling pulled off center by demands to give and give and give until there's nothing left for yourself? Durga is here to assist you in nurturing wholeness by creating and fixing the limits of your personal space. Establishing clear boundaries is an act of self-love. Having no boundaries gives others the message that you are limitless and want to be treated in a limitless way. No one is limitless. There are places where we get hurt, places where we are vulnerable, places that need to be treated with care. Durga says that boundaries are vital because they let others know who you are and where you stand. I hope that you guys enjoyed the weekly reading. Namaste, angels.